What's up YouTube and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we have some more Fury Tech on the bench. And so here I have the Guana Pro and the Chameleon uh, brushed motor from Fury Tech. So these are both uh, relatively new products to the website. So if you're interested, definitely check out the link in the description. But for today's video, we're gonna unbox them and then we're gonna install them on the deadbolt. So first, uh, let's open this guy up and this is the Chameleon motor. So this is a brushed motor by Fury Tech. So here we go, open it up. There's gonna be a couple things in here. First is the brushed motor that we all know of. And then we have a carbon fiber motor plate. As you can see right there, so it's made out of carbon fiber. It's got all your holes. And then here we have a brass pinion gear on our chameleon. So let me show you guys what I'm looking at over here. So this is the website. It's a, a combo right here. So it's chameleon combo and the Guana Pro. And so it's a brushed motor, it's plug and play, 27 by 15.5 millimeters, weighs 18.3 grams, carbon brush technology, 11 tooth brass pinion included, high quality carbon plate. It's everything you need to install it into your Axio SCX24. And so let's open up the Guana Pro. So here is the Guana Pro at a closer look and you have all your, your plugs in, your battery, your motor, your ESC, you got everything, your Bluetooth uh, little module. And the Guana Pro is a little bit different because it is built specifically for brush systems. So it won't work on your brushless system, so make sure not to get the wrong uh, product for your, for your system. So because we have the brush motor here, these are gonna pair well together. Um, they're pretty much pretty simple plug and play. And now we're just gonna take out the old uh, motor on the deadbolt. First things first, I want to grab my Wire 1.3 quality tool. If you're interested in one, definitely check out the link in the description. I use this tool on all my videos. But uh, first we're going to remove the body to get to things a little bit easier and then we will get to the motor. So now that the body's off, we're going to remove the motor. And so it's going to be two screws down here. So it's going to be one right there, one here on the skid plate, and then up top here, let me get this battery out of the way, there's going to be screw right in here. I also forgot to mention that we also need to remove the battery tray because it holds in the whole motor. So the battery tray is held in by a screw here and a screw right there. So there's two on each side. It's pretty simple stuff. All right, so now the battery tray is up and out and we can simply pull out the whole drivetrain like that. Disconnect our motor and here is our truck without the drivetrain. And here is our drivetrain and so uh, as you can see here is a stock motor transmission case I believe we should remove these drivetrains first to get to uh, the transmission and so to remove these there's gonna be a little screw right there as, as you can see there's one right there there's one on the other side I think we only need to take off one of them but uh, I'm just gonna take off both because I can't remember which one it is and always remember uh, the shorter shorter pipe is on the side of the transmission cover and the longer pipe faces the back of the truck. Grab those two screws. So we'll just pop it off. The other one. Next thing is to remove the transmission cover. So it's gonna be a screw right here by the motor, another screw here by the transmission. And while I'm doing this, uh, I have this mat here. I've been having it since I moved out. This mat is really useful in organizing all your screws and where they go. I never used to have anything like this before and I was confused what I, what I was doing. So definitely look into something like this if you plan on working on your SCX24 a lot. The link will be in the description as well. So now we did undid those two screws and our transmission cover comes off pretty easily. And I'm gonna put that with those screws over there. So now we need to take off this little nut on this little transmission. We don't know really what it's called, but we need to remove this next. And so this is uh, the same sized tool I use in my wheels. So over here on my wheels, I got this from my T tool from my RC4 drive wheels. It just so happens to be the same size nut right here on the transmission. So I use that, so that comes off, set that to the side. And I'm gonna note that when I pull off this wheel, the, um, I'll explain this to you. It looks like it is the shorter side. So the shorter side, See it like that, see it's a little bit shorter than that side. The shorter side was facing up, so I'm gonna remember to put that in facing up once I uh, put everything back together. And then we're almost to the motor, and so there's two more screws 
hold in the motor to the plate and there's one, two there. So the screws that hold in the motor are 1.5 millimeter compared to the 1.3 I believe that everything else is. So uh, you definitely got to have one of these on deck. You're going to be working on your SCX24. There's two. And so there is our motor. So it's finally off. Super small compared to uh, the Fury Tech motor. It's a lot longer. So we're gonna put that to the side. We don't need the pinion or anything. Um, we'll save that in our parts bin. So now here is the motor plate with the transmission. We also need to remove this motor plate because we have the new carbon fiber motor plate. Let's see. And so if you kind of, uh, how do you? It's always confusing to me how I, how these things line up. But that's how it's gonna line up. So there is the stock motor plate. Here is the Fury Tech one. And so you kind of just line up the holes and see where things kind of belong. And if you have it in a weird direction or something, it won't really work. So just kind of eyeball it, match up your holes. And that's where we're going. So uh, now I am going to remove the following, was it one, two, three, four screws that hold the old motor plate to the, to the old transmission. So as I was saying earlier, this would probably be the time to rebuild the transmission if you're gonna do it, because you already have it apart. For, to um, go over it one more time, there's where your holes are gonna be. And so on the stock transmission plate, there's two holes versus this new one where there's four. So that's really what you're after. This little swap, take that off. I'm just gonna line that up back in the holes that we just uh, removed. And so grab our screws everything back together. So that's what's really cool about this kit is it lines up, don't have to do any modifications, don't gotta have to drill any holes, it's already done for you. So next thing we're gonna do is uh, put our motor back on. And so this is the one thing I'm confused on. I don't know which way is the right way. So we're gonna take a guess. I'm assuming that we wanna see the Fury Tech logo. We don't wanna hide it. We don't wanna put it like that. We wanna show it off to everybody. I'm gonna put it in like that, and we're gonna grab our 1.5 millimeter. Is it millimeter? I'm gonna grab our little dynamite screws that we had with our dynamite, and we're gonna match it up with the holes that are in the new plate. So there's that. Next, we're gonna grab our little wheel, and we're gonna do the shorter side up like we did last time. Pop that guy on there, make sure it's not on too tight. And grab our little nut, pop it on there, and we're not gonna tighten it too tight, we're just gonna do it regular, just hand tighten it, finger tight, <laughs> I guess you could say. Make sure it spins, make sure there's no binding, so that's there. And then we're gonna put the transmission cover back on. We're pretty much just doing everything in reverse. So there is our motor swap, that was pretty simple. So the motor goes in like that. That, no problem and then our battery tray and I think I might hit our battery tray a little bit I think we'll have to cut maybe like this little sport of the battery tray there's three more I'm not really worried about that and so now we just gotta attach our drive trains again so like I said um, the shorter side faces the truck you line up the holes they kind of have a specific way to put it back together you can see one side's flat one side it's like a half moon so you just have to figure out the half moon real quick so there is our motor swap now just gotta put it in the truck. Oh yeah. So like I said, shorter, shorter side faces the front of the vehicle, longer side faces the rear. So when you're putting the drive, the whole drivetrain back in the truck, I like to line up the drive shafts first and then tighten up the little screw up top because if you do the ones down below, it just, I don't know, it just makes it harder, I think. Bam, and then I go down here on the bottom and I put these guys back in their spot. So I'm not so worried about keeping the integrity of the battery tray. It's not a big deal to me. So it just lined up how we did. And then, yeah, so it looks like this is gonna rub right here. So with a pair of pliers, come in here. I, I think it could work, but I'm just too lazy. I don't really care about that. So snip that side. Now, I'm just gonna line all the holes up and put the battery tray in. So there is the chameleon in the deadbolt. So it's all set up in uh, the deadbolt. And I did want to show you guys how it was, how it would run without uh, the Guana Pro. But uh, 
the the cable connector the wire whatever that connects the esc the stock esc it's not long enough to fit so i can't show you that to you guys but that is something worth noting if you just plan on getting um the chameleon that you might need an extender uh to plug into your esc but uh luckily we do have the guana pro right here so it's not too big of a deal so here it is and so black right here these black these black two cables wires whatever you want to call them these are for the motor this black and red one is for the battery this one plugs into your esc and this is your bluetooth so dang it's powered on there's your little blue light flashing it is a pretty tight fit over here um that my uh my slot that goes into my ac it, it, it fits with enough slack but if you had a different setup that wasn't stock you might have to think about it a little bit maybe get an extender but uh coming from stock it works perfect so i'm gonna plug it into channel two there's only one way to put it in it has a little slot on there turn that turn on more beeping <laughs> So now I'm gonna grab our controller. Turn on. New controller. Turn it on. Another steering. So everything is now connected. So we need to open up the Fury Tech app. And here it is on my tablet. So it's opened up. I turned the Bluetooth on. Everything's on here. And so it says press car icon to connect for the first time. Press the car icon. Car icon. Connecting. So you have to set a password. So everything's set up now. And so I pull the trigger. Going forwards, it goes backwards. When I go backwards on the trigger, it goes forwards on the vehicle. So the first thing we need to do is change the configuration. So it's on brushed. So with that, that's good because it's a brushed vehicle. So we're gonna go here to settings. We're gonna go to running and rotation direction. We're gonna go from counter, from clockwise to counterclockwise and see if that fixes it. So reverse, reverse, yep. So there it is, it's fixed. And so, yeah, I guess it doesn't matter which way you uh, install the motor because you can change it through that. So, pull the trigger again, there it is, Go reverse, there it is. So now, here I wanna do, what I wanna do? I wanna go to throttle, the throttle, and I wanna calibrate. So here is uh, the double unlock. <laughs> That's pretty slow for a brush, for a brush system, holy moly. I wonder how fast it is if it's on a high, let's see. That's about, about normal almost. I don't know. And so there is uh, the Iguana Pro and the Chameleon. It's pretty, pretty compact, if you ask me. Um, these little small little guys, they really do save up a lot of room. So if you're definitely uh, jam-packed with room on your vehicle, definitely consider one of those. But I do have to note that uh, I do have their brushless system on my Ultra 4 over here. And I was trying to connect via my phone and I guess because this one's kind of connected to that, I don't know, or something, I don't know, I'm not too sure. The connection was kind of bad and I couldn't really connect, so I bought a tablet, so luckily I have a tablet. So if you have more than one system, definitely think about that, um, that connection, but overall, this is a pretty simple install. How, mu how much does this thing cost? Ooh, ooh. Man, where are we going, we're over here. So this entire system cost $89. I say that's a deal, man. Uh, these little, these little compact, uh, systems are really really dope when uh, doing your throttle control and They're connected to a Bluetooth app. It's, you can change everything on your phone. You can see stats on your phone So I definitely would recommend it the whole conversion probably took me about Maybe 10-15 minutes. That's with making the video probably a lot shorter if I didn't have to make a video pretty simple process uh, Yeah, I'm, I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot actually. All right, so here is the body on kind of just on the hinge and then close it like that. Fits pretty well, pretty good. No issues. Pop up your pop your pins. I would say that you kind of do have to hang it off the side a little bit, maybe something like that. You can't really do it directly like that because the deadbolt clearance is pretty um, small. But if you do have the Jeep or the C10, you definitely can probably work with the more room the body allows for. But it's definitely doable. And so I'm gonna do this like that. 